The educational materials presented here were developed by students and faculty of the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition at Iowa State University. Funding for this project was provided by grants from the American Cancer Society Midwest and the Lance Armstrong Foundation. The materials are intended for educational use and are not meant to provide medical advice. We welcome your feedback about these materials. Please use the evaluation survey link on the home page to provide your comments and suggestions. The markets are full of dietary supplements and it is difficult to know which, if any, might be useful to promote health, resist disease, or improve well-being. This presentation will outline the basic information about dietary supplements and provide helpful information about their contributions to a healthy lifestyle. A supplement is intended to supplement the diet. The main feature of a supplement is that it is very different from a food. It contains one or more ingredients such as a vitamin, mineral, botanicals, or herbs and is intended to be taken orally in pill, capsule, liquid, or tablet form. Supplements are labeled as supplements on the front panel. In the picture shown here, you can see that this particular vitamin supplement includes calcium and vitamin D, which are two ingredients, and it is taken orally in the form of a tablet, and it is labeled as a supplement on the front panel. Vitamin and mineral supplements have been available to consumers for over 100 years. These products are typically mixtures of known essential nutrients in quantities defined by the National Academy of Sciences and the Recommended Dietary Allowances, or the RDA. The label on these supplements define the percent of the RDA that is met by one of the dose of the product. In general, vitamin and mineral supplements are safe to be consumed when they contain around 100% of the RDA. Supplements with much more than the RDA, 200% or greater, are not necessary and may cause toxicity. So when are vitamin supplements advisable? Vitamin B12 supplements are advisable for individuals over the age of 50 who have trouble absorbing this vitamin naturally. Folic acid supplements may be advisable to women who may become pregnant or are pregnant in order to decrease the likelihood of having a baby with neural tube defects. Vitamin D supplements are also advisable to individuals who do not get enough exposure to the sun and who do not get enough vitamin D through fortified products. Calcium is sometimes also advised for bone health in mostly women. Herbal supplements are different than vitamin or mineral supplements because there are no known requirements for herbal compounds to maintain health. This means that there is no RDA for herbal ingredients. Herbal supplements are mixed with compounds derived from plants and algae, but some supplements may also contain ingredients from animal sources, such as fish oil or pancreatic extracts. Our understanding of herbal supplements is derived from traditional medicine practices of many civilizations for many, many years. In these cultures, healers use naturally occurring products to treat ailments, and out of these practices, modern medicine arose. All dietary supplements sold in the U.S. must comply with strict labeling laws. On the front panel, the label must include a statement of identity indicating the composition of the product and the net quality of contents. The label also must contain a list of ingredients and particular supplement and other ingredients in descending order of predominance and by common name or proprietary blend. In addition, labels must also contain the name and place of the business of manufacturer, packer, and distributor. This information regarding the business of the manufacturer is important because if you have any questions or would like more information regarding a particular supplement, you should be able to write to the address listed on the label. Though not regulated by the FDA, manufacturers are allowed to make four kinds of claims about their product. They are allowed to make nutritional claims which state that there is a certain level of a particular nutrient found in the supplement. For instance, they can claim a supplement to have a high amount or a low amount of a particular nutrient. They can also make a health claim that describes the relationship between the active ingredient in the supplement and its effect on reducing the risk of a health-related condition. Manufacturers may also make a structure or function claim. These claims describe the role of an ingredient intended to affect the normal structure or function of the body. The graphic here shows an example of a function claim. This fruit supplement claims to help maintain healthy joint function. Before purchasing any supplement, there are always some things that you should know. It is important to realize that supplements are not pharmaceutical drugs. They do not undergo rigorous testing for safety or efficacy, and there is no oversight by the FDA about which ingredients are included in the product. It is important to use caution before using supplements and to speak with your doctor about the supplement that you are considering. 
Supplements may impact your specific conditions. It is also important to consult your doctor to become aware of the possible side effects of the supplement and if the supplement would have any negative reactions with the current medications that you are taking. If you decide to use a supplement with your physician's approval, the next step is to find a safe and reliable product. This can be challenging because none of the products on the market are regulated by the FDA. You should consider the manufacturer as some large pharmaceutical companies are now marketing herbal supplements. In general, these companies can be considered reliable because of their reputation and concern for safety. Other ways to reduce the risk of using a product that may contain contaminants or have poor quality control are to look for the pharmacopoeia verification stamp seen here on the slide. This is a program that the government does not sponsor, but it verifies the product meets standards including uniformity, cleanliness, freedom from contaminants. Keep in mind, it does not mean that the supplement has been approved. It is also important to select only single herb supplements. This is recommended because with single herb supplements, you can be sure of the quantity of the herb in each dose. With multiple herb supplements or a mixture of supplements, you may not be able to know the proportion of each one. Beware of claims that are too good to be true when looking for a supplement. There are also no supplements that are known to cure any disease or condition. You should also be cautious of supplements manufactured outside of the U.S. According to the Mayo Clinic, toxic ingredients and prescription medications have been found in some supplements that were manufactured internationally. Unlike drugs, supplements have no governmental standards for ensuring safety, effectiveness, and quality. They are also not approved by the FDA. There has been insufficient scientific research to demonstrate efficacy of ingredients, appropriate doses, potential side effects, and long-term consequences of supplement use. In most cases, the active ingredient is not known, and in fact, several ingredients may function together to generate a response. Because of the complexity of these issues, the scientific understanding of supplement mode of action and biological effects is inadequate. Therefore, caution is recommended when purchasing and using herbal supplements. One mechanism through which many supplements may impact health is by acting as antioxidants. Oxidation is a natural event in the human body in which oxygen interacts with other molecules and in turn causes them to be damaged. Common targets for oxidation include lipids and membranes, DNA molecules, and proteins. The body has many defense systems in place to protect from oxidative damage. These antioxidants include enzymes and chelators that remove oxygen-containing molecules and repair damage. Many plants contain natural antioxidants as well, which do protect the plant cells. Here's a list of some supplements that are considered to be unsafe. Kava kava, for instance, can cause liver damage, and comfrey can cause liver damage as well. Lobelia is potentially toxic and binds to nicotine receptors in the body and can have a nicotine effect on its users. Products derived from animal brain or nerve products may also contain prions that cause mad cow disease. All the supplements listed here on the slide should be avoided. Individuals taking various medications should also avoid herbal supplements due to possible interactions between the active ingredients and the medication. According to the Mayo Clinic, if the medical treatment is available for your condition, then you should stick to the medical treatment instead of turning to an herbal supplement and is less likely to have adverse side effects. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you should also avoid herbal supplements. This is because what is good for the mom may not be good for the fetus or the baby. You should also avoid any supplements if you are having surgery. If you are younger than 18 years or older than 65, you should avoid these supplements as well due to the fact that older adults metabolize medicines differently and because there has not been enough research done for appropriate dose amount and safety of herbal supplements on children. A supplement is intended to supplement the diet. The main feature of a supplement is that it is very different from a food. It contains one or more ingredients such as a vitamin, mineral, botanical, or herb and is intended to be taken orally in pill, capsule, liquid, or tablet form. Supplements are not regulated by the FDA and cannot be guaranteed safe. The best way to get vitamins and minerals is to eat a healthy and balanced diet full of a variety of brightly colored